Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is February 23rd, 1938, and the title is Missing Letter. Let's get into it, and thanks for listening. A cloud of dust and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Glamour of the Old West is brought back to us today as the famous Lone Ranger, mystery rider of the plains, urges the great horse Silver down the danger trails of long ago. Listen to the tattoo of those silver shod hoofs. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, old boy! The tin old fellow! Run as you've never run before! We're needed on the trail ahead! I signal for the start of the first thrilling ride of the Pony Express in the year 1860. The route extended from Missouri to California. For two years, the most highly skilled young horsemen and the fastest mounts carried the mail across the country in record time. Twenty-four hours a day, the pony riders urged their fleet little horses along the trail at top speed. Stations were established every few miles to furnish fresh horses for the racing riders. Our story begins as we see a foam-flecked horse pulled to a stop at the end of his run. There he is, just on time. Slap that saddle on a fresh horse and let me be on my way. I'm out to make a record. Bill Cody just passed here in the eastbound I'll run. Beat his time if I have to break my neck flying. Want some hot coffee? Why not this time? Hurry up with that saddle. Cinch it up tight. I got some important papers this trip. Yeah? What are they? I don't know. Some for Silver Gulch. This particular load just got to get through fast. Sam takes the mail from you to the next station, don't he? Yeah. What's taking you so long about that horse? Hurry up there. Watch out for engines ahead. I'm watching all the time. Your horse is ready. That's the ticket. Well, I'm on my way. Get along there. Pony Express rider was on his way again with important papers to be delivered to Silver Gulch. He gave his mount his head and urged him along at his greatest speed in an effort to break the record of another Express rider, Bill Cody, later to be known as Buffalo Bill. Then from ambush, a shot rang across the plain. The Pony Express rider fell headlong from his horse while the animal continued down the trail alone. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, 
had made their camp along the route at a point several miles beyond the spot where the express rider had been ambushed. As the riderless horse flashed past them, they ran out on the trail looking for some explanation. That pony rider horse. But where's the rider? Me not know. Maybe him fall off. The pony riders don't fall off their horses, Tonto. And that's right. And that horse isn't running away. It's galloping right along the regular trail. Something's happened. Maybe that's right. Here, Silver. What you do, huh? It's about eight miles to the station where the horses are chained. We're going back there, Tonto, and see what's happened to the pony rider. And that's good. When anyone interferes with the mail, it's something serious. You think someone do something? The only way to get a pony rider from his horse is to shoot him off. Yep. Come with me, Tonto. Tonto, ready. Come on, Silver. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode back to the spot where the express ride had been shot, our scene changes to the town of Silver Gulch. Like so many other towns of the surrounding country, Silver Gulch was situated at the bottom of a steep hill. On the hill itself were two homes, crudely built of logs. In one of the places lived Jim Flood and his wife. Our story continues as Jim says, I can't tell what to do, Ruth. It's the darnest thing I ever seen. Here I am with a fortune in gold right outside a house, and I can't get it. Jim, we waited long enough for that Eastern Company to buy out your claim. I don't reckon they ever aimed to buy it. I sort of figured from what the examiner said that it wouldn't be no question but what they'd buy us out. Same as they've done with all the other good claims. I'd say we'd better sell your land to Harv Riggs and get what we can out in it. Come out back and take a look at the claim, Ruth. I've seen it a hundred times. But maybe we can figure out some way to get the ore out. Come on. Get the tired climb in this hill. I don't know whatever possessed us to build our house here. Good timber, a swift stream, and being near my claim, that's what it was. Right here. Let me help you, Ruth. You'll like to turn your ankle on this loose rock. Now I get along better alone. What's Harv Riggs' last offer? Just $150. Including the house? The whole works. House, land, and gold claim. Ain't much. Ain't nothing at all to what the claim is worth. The worst of it is, these rocks are so doggone loose. I send them sliding down on Riggs' place every time I stick a spade into the ground. And you can't get the pay dirt without spading. No. What's that paper Riggs has got from the law? Something called an injunction. What's it do? Just about ruins me, that's what. It keeps me from doing any digging here. Every time I dig, I send the shale down on Riggs' property. So he got this paper. Next time I dig, I go to jail. Here's Riggs coming up the hill now. Oh, Henry Rat. Hey, Flood. Hello, Riggs. Well, I just stepped outside your house by the rock to sleep past my place. Yeah? It's all over my proposition. Buy your place? Buy mine or sell me yours. Ain't no ways an even proposition. You offer one fifty for mine and ask a thousand for yours. That's the deal. And mine has gold on it. Well, I can't get it that gold, though, can you? Thanks to you and your dog on legal papers, I can't. Jim, why can't you build a fence and keep the rock from sliding down? Sorry, ma'am, that won't do. You build a dozen fences and it wouldn't do. It'll stop the sliding rock. Yeah, if only that paper don't make no mention of fences. It just says that you can't dig and it's all there is to it. Why, you ornery polecat, you're just trying to force me to accept your proposition. Well, that's right. But look here, Reeves. One fifty for my land's nothing at all. Why, them eastern mining men said it was worth at least $20,000. They ain't offered you that much, have they? Well, no. But they might. It takes time for the mails to get here. <laughs> you won't get no such offer. Like it's not that fool's gold, anyhow. It ain't neither. Well, buy me out for a thousand. That's a good bargain. If your place is worth 20000 All right, I will. thousand dollars cash money. But now, wait, Rig. You know blame well I ain't no cash. Cash is what I'm after. I'd have it blamed soon if I could dig that land. The paper says you go to jail as soon as you start digging. Look here, Big. I'll make a deal with you. I'm listening. I'll pay two thousand dollars. That sounds good. But not cash money. I'll give you two thousand if you let me dig my land to get it. That ain't no deal. The law says you can't dig. But I could if you was to let me. I'll sign a paper pledging two thousand dollars to you, and you take have the judge take the paper back. Call that injunction. Please. No. Your place ain't worth 500. What more do you want? <laughs> I know a good thing when I see you, Jim. Reckon I'd be a blame fool to let this chance go by. Sooner or later, you'll have to sell your land, won't you? Oh, why? Sell it or starve. But I don't reckon anyone would buy it with me holding this injunction. You better sell to me while you got the chance. Because maybe when you want to sell, 
I won't be willing to go as high as a hundred and a half. Oh, Kent, that's what you are. You know just enough about the law to use it to your selfish end. You're misjudging me, Jim. You're the one that's being selfish. You're like the dog in the manger. You can't use the land yourself, and you won't let no one else use it. Well, I can wait. I reckon you'll sell when you begin to get good and hungry. Several days went by. Jim Flood, unable to sell to the Eastern Syndicate and unwilling to sell to Riggs, began to feel the pinch of poverty. As our next scene opens, we see him in the Silver Glove Cafe and watch him as he approaches the bartender. If you just let me have a little more credit, Steve. I'd like to, Jim, but you already owe a sizable amount here. But it's grub I want. Little state liquor. No, don't you see? Uh, food costs money, Jim. I'm afraid your credit here has come wore out. You won't give me none, Steve? I reckon not. You ain't heard from that eastern company, have you? No, not yet. Well, I didn't figure you would. Riggs was talking about the fool's gold you thought was genuine. Riggs, that ornery. He says that you never would hear from that company. He says we'd be foolish to let you have more credit. We never will get our money. Riggs is trying to make me sell out to him. That's why he's saying them things. Well, maybe you better have sell out. For a hundred and fifty dollars? Oh, Steve, you know what my place is worth. Well, it ain't worth much if it's got fool's gold on it. Let me tell you something, Jim Flood. Yeah? If you don't sell out pretty quick, me and Sam over in the general store is going to have to go to law. I suppose that's Riggs' suggestion, too. Well, it's a good one. You owe us both considerable money. It's up to us to get it. We can force you to sell out if we have to. Pardon me. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did it be, stranger? I happen to overhear you two talking. I reckon we was talking a little too loud. Who is this man, Riggs? What do you want to know for? Who is he? He lives up on the hill away, just below my house. I've heard something about the situation on that hill. Your name is Flood, isn't it? That's right. What's your handle, stranger? Suppose you call me friend. Friend? Huh. I reckon that's one thing I ain't got right now. Flood, you'll sit over here at the corner table with me. I'll stake you to a meal. Thanks, stranger. It ain't so much that I'm hungry, it's the missus, my wife. She's home. When you go home, you'll take food to her, Flood. I ain't taking charity from no stranger. You're looking for word from the east, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Hey, a stranger. You sort of talk like an easterner. Is that where you're from? Fix up some food for Flood to take home when he goes. You'll be paid for it. Are you from the eastern mining syndicate? Suppose we sit over here at this corner table and talk. <laughs> I I don't know when food ever tasted better, stranger. Tell me more about this letter you've been looking for. Uh, uh, Seeing as you ain't from the mining company, I reckon I ain't looking for no letter. Just what was it to be? Well, I reckon there ain't no use talking about it now. I sort of hoped I might get an offer for my land. I can't work it on account of its being on a hill. The stone falls down on Riggs' land. I heard about that. He has an injunction that prevents you from working your land. Yeah, that's right. He wants to buy your place from you. For a hundred and fifty dollars. Huh. That ain't very much, but I expect I'll soon have to sell to him. Suppose the Eastern Company did buy the land. Chuck, they'd be able to rake up the cash and pay Riggs what he wants for his place and work the claim. But you can't pay the cash, huh? Gosh, no. I can't even raise the price of a square meal no more. How'd I ever get a thousand dollars? I'd like to see Harv Riggs. Oh, he'll be coming in here real soon, blowing off his mouth and bragging how he put a slick deal over on me. You just stick around, stranger, and you'll see him. gave food to Jim Flood and loaned him money. Then, covering his disguised face with his mask, he left town and rode to the small, well-concealed camp where Tonto waited for him. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, oh, there, fellow. You find Tonto? Yes, Tonto. I found Jim Flood in the cafe. Oh. What him like? He's all right, Tonto. He's up against hard luck, mighty hard. Oh? I also saw Harv Riggs. That good. He came in before I left. 
Him feller you want? Yes, Tata. He's the fellow the pony rider described to us. Him feller who shoot pony rider? Tata, Harv Riggs is our man. How you prove that? With the pony rider dead, I don't see how we can prove that Harv Riggs is the one who stole the mail. Unless we succeed in the plan, I have in mind. What? That. The pony rider told us Riggs stole one letter from the mailbag. Uh Uh-huh. Then him leave Pony Rider. He left the rest of the mail as it was, strapped to the back of the rider. It looked like Indians had done the killing. Uh. I think the paper rig stole was an offer from the East to buy Jim Flood's claim. What we do? Unless Flood has that paper, he'll sell out for practically nothing. Then Riggs will sell to the Eastern Corporation. Uh. I want to find that paper, Tonto. Must be someplace in Harv Riggs' house. You'll have to go there tonight and search the place. Me? Do. We'll watch. You go in when Riggs leaves. And when we've got the paper, Tonto, we're going to stake a claim of our own. We'll stake it on that same hill, higher up in Jigging Flood's place. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. You will recall that in the first act of our Lone Ranger drama, Jim Flood found himself unable to work his mind or sell it because of the opposition of his neighbor. A letter to Flood from the Eastern Syndicate was stolen by Riggs before it reached its true destination. Riggs had also won an injunction prohibiting Flood working the claim on the grounds that loose rock endangered his property. At this point, the Lone Ranger took a hand in the affair by giving financial help to Jim Flood, the famous masked rider determined to bring Riggs to justice. That night, Tonto entered Riggs' home in search of the missing letter. In the meantime, Riggs had gone to call on Jim Flood. We hear him as he raps on the door of Jim's home. Evening, Jim. I figured you might want to talk to me tonight. Oh, you. Well, come in, Riggs. Come in. I heard you was having hard luck in town today. You knew I was going to have hard luck before I went there, Riggs. It's your talk that's had them shut off all my credit everywhere. Well, you can't blame a man for being a shrewd business dealer, can you, Flood? I'd almost sooner starve than sell out at your price. And so would I, Jim. Tell Riggs we ain't going to sell. I... Oh. No, I can't do it, Ruthie. I reckon we ain't no choice but to sell out to this pole cat and try and find new digging somewhere. When them vittles that man from the east brought us is gone, well, there won't be no more. No money to buy none with. And no credit. $150 is a lot of cash, Jim. Don't you take it, Jim. What'll we do when the 150 is gone? We won't have nothing then, not even this house in the clean. All right. I reckon we can find something to do. We'll settle down in the valley. You won't need to worry, Jim. I'll give you a job working for me. I'll make that part of the deal. I'll pay you 150 cash and give you a job. Well, that's fair enough, ain't it? Uh, I reckon so. I guess our dreams of being wealthy won't never be more than dreams, Jim. Some people just ain't cut out for well. That's the way to look at it, Mrs. Flood. Now, here, I got a paper all made out. Bill of sale, it's called. Let me see it. All I got to do is fill in the date. Need it for tomorrow, and you just sign it, and I'll hand over the money to you. Ah, I sure hate to do this. After all your hard years of prospecting, Jim, to finally strike this gold claim, and then have to sell out for $150. Never mind, Ruth. We never had the gold, so we won't miss it. What about that job, Riggs? I'll write it right here on this paper for you. I'll even specify just how much I'm to pay you. Don't be much. I'll vouch for that. It'll be a living wage. You needn't worry. <gasps> Jim, look. Oh, what the? Take it easy. It's an outdoor, a masked man. Put down them guns, mister. I want you to come with me. What are you coming here for? What do you want? Who are you? You stay back, Riggs. It's Jim Flood I want. You can't do this. You can't take me. I ain't got nothing to say. Hurry, you. Flood. I'm waiting. Don't try to draw that gun. Oh, all right, mister. You're showing good sense, Jim, and coming without a struggle. All right, Flood, I'm... Riggs, Riggs, don't let him take Jim. Stop him somehow. Stop him. <laughs> I don't know anything I could have done. He's captured Jim. He's run off with him. Is this more of your ornery scheming? Oh, 
And so, while Ross and Shale thundered into the valley, men fought their way upward to rescue him. His door faces the top of the hill, boys. Like it's been jammed with rocks, so you can't get out. Come on, boys. Keep your foot in. This is in his house. Come on and help me. Well, help me. There he is. We're coming, stranger. We're coming. Is Riggs in there? Yes, he chased him out. Rocks are piled against the house. Toss them rocks to die, boys. Help! Help! Let me out! Let me out of here! We're here, Riggs. We'll get you out. Hurry! Hold the house door. Let me in it. Get those rocks away from the door. Try to stop enough now. You're going to be all right, Riggs. Keep them rocks aside. It won't be long now. I guess the worst of the slide is done with. Sounds to me like a blast has started it. Hurry with those rocks. This is downright curious. These rocks don't look like shale that have been broken off. They look like they've been piled here by someone. Never mind, think of too much. Get them to the side. Ah, ah, now we can get out. Oh, God. Oh, thank goodness you come, boys. Couldn't get through the windows, eh? No. I guess the slide is over now, anyhow. But your work, men, has just begun. Who are you, anyhow? Please, you stand right where you are. I imagine when you thought you'd lose your house for the slide, you hid the most valuable of your possessions on your person. I hope so. Don't make a move. Hey, the stranger's holding the gun on me. What's the big idea, stranger? Listen to me, men. Someone killed the pony rider and stole a certain letter from him. What? The rider lived just long enough to describe the killer. He knew the letter was addressed to Jim Flood. And the killer he described was Harv Riggs. He lied. He ain't got no proof. The description of the murderer fits you, Riggs. Since I came here, I found out that you'd have reason to want that letter. But I wouldn't. Eh? That ain't true. Keep your hands where they are. Yeah, see here, stranger. You can't talk like Listen to me until I finish. The letter to Jim Flood was one he was expecting from an eastern mining syndicate. I thought I'd get an offer to buy my place to see Jim. Well, Riggs knows that. You didn't want me to get that offer. He figured to force me to sell out to him, and then he'd sell to the Eastern people. Well, it's nothing but a pack of lies. It ain't true. It, it can is. easily be proved. Riggs, if you didn't steal that letter, you wouldn't have it now. Well, I ain't. I, I, I can't. Stand still, Riggs. You're going to be searched. Well, I won't submit to this. It's an insult. I'll take you to court. We'll hold court right here. That whole landslide was staged for your benefit. Rocks were piled against your house, so you couldn't get out. Take your hands off me. No. He'll let me see about that letter. Uh, here, here, here's something. Over the lantern, Coach. I don't know nothing about that. I didn't put it there. I, I don't know how it got in my pocket. Here, Jim, this is yours. Uh, my letter. Sakes alive. How'd you get it, Riggs, if you didn't do what the masked man said? Uh, Jim, boy. blood must have stuck it in my pocket. Boys, this offers me 5,000 cash and half interest in the mine for my claim. I'm going to be rich. Oh, you free me. Shut up, Riggs. Why should Jim Flood try to frame you by putting that letter in your clothes? That letter makes him a rich man. Can't you? We sure want to thank you. Oh, Get that mess, man. Smith, Smith. How do you know he ain't the killer? Maybe he's just trying to frame me for what he done. We don't want him, Riggs. We got you. <laughs>
highlighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening. <laughs>